To Mr. Speaker, as I close, let me say that children have died because of child sexual abuse. Join me in supporting this legislation to be able to say zero tolerance for the cover-up of sexual abuse of children. It's a pox on our house. Where is the children's lobbyist? The gentlelady's time has expired. We must be that lobbyist. I yield back. Chair recognizes the gentlelady from California, Ms. Lee, for five minutes. Without objection. To rise and extend my remarks. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise with my um, colleagues today to call for an immediate extension of the emergency unemployment benefits, including those who have hit the 99 week limit. Uh, also, I want to ask for the extension of the payroll tax holiday for millions of Americans. I also urge my colleagues to reject attempts to attack these urgently needed economic recovery actions with partisan proposals to gut the Clean Air Act and support big oil at the expense of middle and low income individuals. Republicans in the House have already tried to pass hundreds of anti-environmental bills, amendments and policy riders. Apparently, this is not enough. Now Republicans want to combine, combine repealing important Clean Air Act provisions with the extension of the payroll tax cut. Ironically, Mr. Speaker, repealing these Clean Air Act standards for industrial boilers would cost our economy $21 to $52 billion per year in higher health care costs resulting from asthma, lung cancer, emergency department visits, hospitalizations, and premature deaths. Not surprisingly, Republicans have also included expediting approval of the Keystone Pipeline in exchange for a payroll tax extension. This is unacceptable. The proposed route for the Keystone Pipeline is currently being reviewed and revisited by, by uh, the State Department. Also, past State Department environmental impact statements have been found to lack key information on the real and potential environmental impacts of the pipeline. Republican politicians must stop playing games with the American people and holding hostage the recovery of our entire economy just to score political points with their extreme Tea Party base. Instead of wrapping special interest policy riders and polluter giveaways into a tax extender package, Congress should focus on those policies which are demonstrated job creators. That, are, that is the payroll tax cut, domestic clean energy incentives, and unemployment extension. We must not fail, excuse me, unemployment compensation extension. We must not fail to do the work of the American people, and we must not fail to extend, extend these critical benefits before they run out. I call on Republicans to quickly bring a clean bill to the floor that extends emergency unemployment benefits for the millions of job seekers who continue to struggle to find a job in the middle of an economic disaster that the careless deregulation of the banks, two wars, and tax cuts for the wealthy created. Also, it's really unconscionable that while we're trying to increase the time limit for unemployment compensation past 99 weeks, the Republicans now want to reverse this to 59 weeks. This is just downright mean-spirited. So let's have an up or down vote on a clean bill that extends the temporary reduction of the payroll tax cut for millions of Americans who really cannot afford a tax hike. Let's have an up or down vote on a clean bill that isn't filled with special interest policy riders and polluter giveaways. Let's have an up or down vote on a clean bill that keeps millions of families out of poverty. Failing to extend these critical benefits would cripple our recovery, endanger the public health of our communities, and cost the economy over a half million jobs. We can't afford to ignore the needs of the millions of Americans who have run out of time and who are now losing their homes, falling out of the middle class, and relying more and more on government assistance. We really should be taking actions to implement targeted programs and policies that ensure that we are a nation that truly will provide ladders of opportunity and the removal of barriers to the American dream. We should be taking strong action to protect public health and the full implementation of the Clean Air Act as a tool for cleaning up pollution from these power plants and commercial boilers. We also should be working with other countries to reduce the impacts of climate change and to help poor countries adapt to climate impacts. 
This is nothing short of a national emergency, and we must do more to support middle and low-income families, protect the health of our communities, and support our hospitals and local businesses, and get people back to work. This really should be a moral imperative during this holiday season. I yield the balance of my time. The gentlelady yields back. The chair recognizes the gentleman from New York, Mr. Reed, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to express my support for H.R. 3630, the Middle Class Tax Relief and Job Creation Act of 2011. First and foremost, I was glad to hear my colleague on the other side of the aisle recognize that lowering taxes, be them payroll taxes, income taxes, or whatever taxes you want to refer to, but lowering taxes is a job creation policy initiative that should be supportive. Be, should be supported by both sides of the aisle. Now, I am concerned about the payroll tax cut that is continued in this payroll tax bill today, because these are the, the revenue sources for Social Security. But I have come to the conclusion that allowing all Americans to keep more money in their pocket, rather than allowing it to come to Washington, D.C., and to fuel the beast that is created, has been created here in Washington and that is causing the national debt crisis that we now face in the out-of-control spending of Washington, I believe allowing Americans to keep more money in their pocket is a better policy position to take once and for all. And so I support the extension of the payroll tax rate where it is at. This is not the time in this economic climate to take money out of hard-working American families and small businesses and their financial resources that they have to work on as they go forward putting people back to work. So I support the extension of the payroll tax cut. But I would have to be very sensitive and clear with all Americans that this type of tax policy must be offset by a reduction in the spending that is the root cause of the crisis that we now face in Washington, D.C. So we must offset these tax cuts, and we will do and have done that in this bill. I also am glad to see that our unemployment reform measures that are set forth in this bill have the opportunity to go into law. Right now, we are at 99 weeks of unemployment. The President, in his own proposal, says we need to reduce those weeks of unemployment by 20 weeks. We in this bill want to go further. And we'll reduce the number of weeks to 59. Why? Not because we're cold-hearted, not because we're mean-spirited, but we are being open and honest with the American people and saying that there is a cost to this indefinite unemployment extension policy that is coming from the other side of the aisle. What we have to do is realize that we have to live within our means once and for all. And so what this does is it lowers those numbers of weeks, it puts in common sense reforms by making it a requirement that people are looking for a job, it gives the states the flexibility to implement drug testing and drug screening to make sure that the workforce of America has the ability to go back to work when those jobs are available. I have been back in my district, and we do town halls all the time. And what I've heard from small business owners across our district is that one of the main reasons that they cannot hire individuals is because they simply cannot pass a drug test. This common sense reform that's contained in this bill will allow us to develop the workforce of America in a stronger, in a better fashion, so that people can be put back to work once and for all. The other issue in this bill that I have been supportive of is the doc fix. Now, our providers in America are being faced with major cuts, be it through Obamacare, the Health Insurance Reform Act, Affordable Care Act, whatever you may call it. And we're also seeing it in the potential sequestration that we're going to face next year. But what we're doing in this bill is we're, we're giving some certainty to our providers that over the next two years, they'll know what their reimbursement rates. That is critical to the future of our health care industry and therefore we support it. But we cannot be satisfied with this temporary solution. We must come up with a permanent fix to the doc fix so two years from now 
we are not right back into the situation we find ourselves today. And the final point that has caused me to support this bill as vigorously as I will today is that it is a jobs bill. The Keystone Pipeline piece of legislation that is attached to this is being used as a political football. The President has said we can't wait to put people back to work. Well, in this bill, with a stroke of a pen, the President will be able to put 20,000 families back to work with one signature, his signature. To me, that's what we should be doing in this chamber. That's why I ask my colleagues to support this legislation, and I yield back. The gentleman's time has expired. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Tennessee, Mr. Cohen, for five minutes. Over the last three years, much progress has been made in an effort to recover from the economic fallout, the Great Recession that the President inherited from the previous administration. More needs to be done to stabilize our economy and create jobs for the millions of Americans still out of work. That progress may get derailed this week if the Republican majority refuses to extend tax cuts for 160 million Americans and unemployment benefits for 1.3 million Americans. You'd think congressional Republicans, who routinely label Democrats as the party of taxes, which is something Oliver Wendell Holmes said was the price we pay for civilization, that's what taxes are, would eagerly support tax cuts for 160 million hardworking Americans, but they don't. I'm buffed. But you listen to the other side, they've got all kind of reasons. They've got extensions. They've got all kind of riders. But the bottom line is, it's a political fight to defeat the President of the United States. It's been their agenda since he was elected. Every day my Republican colleagues come to the House floor to call for lower taxes, particularly for the millionaires. They call them the job creators. Yet when the time comes to support a Democratic payroll tax proposal that lowers taxes and creates jobs, Republican support is not found. Under the Democratic proposal, a family making $50,000 a year and struggling would save $1,500 next year. But this tax cut does more than put money in the pockets of 160 million hardworking Americans and ensure they won't see a tax increase. It also creates jobs. Mark Zandi, the previous pre Republican presidential candidate, John McCain's economic advisor, said that expanding the payroll tax cut for employees would create 750,000 jobs. Conversely, he says the failure to do so would cost a million jobs. But apparently tax breaks for those people, 160 million Americans, and creation of those jobs is not enough for my colleagues on the Republican side. They need more enticement to support a payroll cut. So what do they get? What's the red meat that gets them to do this? Well, partly, and they have to break their pledge. They made a pledge to America. They said they wouldn't put extraneous legislation together with other legislation to pass a mass bill. It would circumvent the will of the people. They promised to advance major legislation one issue at a time. But Republicans violated this pledge this time by stuffing anti-environmental riders into a must-pass payroll tax bill. While cutting taxes for 160 million Americans seems like something Republicans would unequivocally support, the GOP leadership felt they had to violate that pledge and cram divisive riders into the bill to get support from people who want to put a potentially dangerous, environmentally sensitive areas, a pipeline that has shown uh, repeatedly a failure to be done in an appropriate way, something that has been said would be a carbon bomb being set off in the end of global warming's fight. It would end the game. Despite their claims that the riders would create jobs and stimulate the economy, reality doesn't align with those arguments. The reality is they would destroy our economy, our environment, and the lives of thousands of Americans. The boiler MAC provision in the bill would delay air toxin rules for at least three and a half years. That would result in 28,350 premature deaths, 17,000 heart attacks, nearly 19,000 hospital and emergency room visits, more than 1.2 million days of missed work, and over 150,000 cases of asthma attacks. The health benefits of these regulations are estimated to save up to $67 billion and save all those lives. It's astonishing the Republicans would consider delaying a public health rule that would prevent 8,000 premature deaths a year and save up to $67 billion, the sweetener that was needed to try to get these tax breaks for 160 million Americans. I urge my colleagues to see the folly of their ways and put these harmful riders out of the bill to stop their effort to just defeat President Obama and do what's right for the American public to create jobs and to help people on unemployment, which will stimulate our economy. In their pledge to America, they described what they called circumventing the will of the American people. That's what they're doing today. The will is 
of the American people is not to have deaths and, and injurious health environmental policies, but to create jobs and to help people through this difficult recession. I would ask that we defeat this bill, come back and work together, and do what's right for the American people. I yield back the balance of my time. Is there further debate? Seeing none, pursuant to Clause 12A of Rule 1, the Chair declares the House in recess until noon today. The House is gaveled out until legislative work begins at noon. Members will debate a bill to extend the Social Security payroll tax cut and jobless